I'm very pleased today to introduce and ask questions from Moshe Mahova, an all-time comrade, a friend of the Iranian working class, I would say, long before I knew him. Um, and um, most people know about Moshe, but just for those who don't, he's a mathematician, a philosopher, and a social activist. He's noted not just for his writings against Zionism, but also very valuable work on political economy. He was born to a Jewish family in Tel Aviv at the time uh, when the British Mandate of Palestine was in power. He's a founder member of Matzban, the Israeli socialist organization that was set up in 1962. He is the author of a number of books, but I'm going to mention the two that have to do with political economy, how labor powers uh, the global economy with Emmanuel Farjoun and David Zakaria, and Laws of Chaos, a probabilistic approach to political economy, again, with Emmanuel Farjoun as the author. Welcome, uh, Moshe, and I would like to start by asking you questions about inevitably events in Gaza that has um, created such disaster for the region. Go ahead. Yes, I mean, the disaster is going on and I'm uh, afraid that uh, it is going to go on for, for a while because uh, for various reasons, uh, the uh, Israeli leadership is not going to stop anytime soon. They, they have uh, uh, reasons to prolong it. But first of all, I want to mention that uh, the, the main aim of this war has become not the one that is declared uh, for uh, international consumption, that is to say, to eradicate, uh, to eliminate, to destroy Hamas. Uh, this is a convenient uh, official aim because it is uh, uh, limitless. It is, it is uh, there, there, there is no uh, end to it. Uh, uh, completely eliminate Hamas is not is not going to happen ever. But the in my opinion, the real aim of the war is ethnic cleansing. And this uh, is happening in, in front of our eyes. No one who uh, sees the horror of what is happening, the, the scale of the dislocation, the scale of the uh, uh, hunger and thirst and uh, uh, what is being the, the 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 scale of the destruction can can uh, deny that this is actually ethnic cleansing in in action. Uh, but the question is, with ethnic cleansing, ethnic cleansing, where 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 will the uh, million two million uh, Gazan go? Uh, I think, uh, and uh, uh, looking at the experience of the Nakba of 1947-49, um, the uh, Israeli leadership would prefer the Palestinians of Gaza to, as it were, uh, ethnically cleansing themselves to do it to do it of their own accord. They are creating conditions which are so unbearable that people uh, will, in the end, uh, break out. This is, I think, what, what they aim to do. They are not going to uh, uh, provide transport uh, for the Palestinians to, to go to the Egyptian uh, Sinai Desert. I think they would like uh, conditions to be become such that, that they will be a mass breakout, and this will take time. A breakout towards the Sinai uh, Peninsula, which is part of Egypt, uh, and or towards the sea. 
Uh, I think there are indications. This is, by the way, uh, in line with the long-term aim of the Zionist project to uh, create a Jewish state in the whole of Palestine. And this, uh, in the end, in order to uh, be a, 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 a really stable Jewish state requires creating a Jewish majority. This in turn requires ethnic cleansing of the large number of Palestinians from this area. I could add that I've been predicting uh, uh, ethnic cleansing for several years now. Based on this logic, uh, I didn't, of course, predict that it would start in, in uh, Gaza. In this respect, the Zionist uh, leadership has always been opportunistic. In other words, they, they uh, fall on, they uh, accept any opportunity that falls into their lap in order to use it for, the, uh, for uh, uh, furthering the aims of, of Zionism. So this uh, uh, occurrence, uh, the, the onslaught by Hamas on the 7th of October gave them the uh, uh, excuse, the, the, the pretext to, uh, start to, to perpetrate, to achieve what uh, is in fact the long-term aim of, of uh, the Zionist project. Uh, can I ask you, just as a follow-up from this, how would you expect Egypt to react? Should these people, because clearly Egypt doesn't want a single Palestinian, how do you think Egypt would react? I know ordinary Egyptians have been supporting the Palestinians and would demonstrate in support of them. But the current state of Egypt is a military um, di dictatorship. So how would you see them reacting? And I know it's speculative, but just to see. It, it is speculative. They, they, are, they are not going to welcome uh, these Palestinians. They're going to try to prevent it. But what will they do? Will they start shooting them, killing them as, as Israel is doing in the Gaza Strip? Maybe. Will the Israeli leadership care? Will they will not care? It's, it's, they, they, they will be in the position of saying it's not us who are doing it. We, we are, are, uh, have uh, warned the Palestinians to move from uh, areas of danger to areas of, of more danger, as they've been doing, in fact. Uh, they uh, claim that, that you know, they're, they're, it's not it's not us. It's it, it's 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 all the fault of Hamas. It's all the fault of Egypt and and, and so on. This, of course, uh, 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 this is not going to improve their uh, relation with with Egypt. But I, I, I've heard talk of Egypt, you know, being as it were compensated for accepting Palestinians by. Uh, financial grants from the United States, uh, of course, not, not from Israel itself. Uh, Israel will also be in a position, I think, uh, that they, they, they have plans for uh, developing the, the Gaza Strip and, and the uh, gas deposits on, on its shore, which are actually huge. And that, that, that will maybe you, you be used partly in order to compensate Egypt for accepting Palestinian refugees. One thing that people want to know in Iran is um, uh, what is the role of Putin and Russia in all this? And I know it's a side issue, but for Iran, given Iran, the Islamic Republic's close relations with Russia, it's an important issue. So I wondered if you could comment on that. This is a fascinating uh, uh, question because uh, surprisingly enough for some people, the relationship between uh, the Netanyahu government at present and in, in the past with uh, uh, Putin's Russia are quite... Uh, cordial uh, in a way uh, Putin has been has visited Israel uh, not long ago and was very warmly received uh, 
Um, there are quite good relations. They are based on various things. First of all, uh, there are a, a, a big number of uh, immigrants from Russia and from Russian speaking, you know, former Soviet Union countries into Israel. And uh, they uh, ha have quite uh, uh, fond uh, the uh, memories and relations they, they go they go back and forth into Russia. Uh, uh, Putin uh, uh, has said that uh, Israel is the, the uh, only country where there is a big Russian speaking uh, community outside what used to be the the Soviet Union, which is in in, in fact true. But there are more solid grounds for this warm relationships, and that is Syria. As people may know, the sky of Syria is controlled by Russia. The, the Russian uh, uh, Air Force controls uh, the, the sky of Syria. Um, Israel has an interest and a habit of incursions into uh, uh, Syrian uh, airspace very frequently. I mean, there are uh, continual incursions of, by the Israeli Air Force uh, into uh, the uh, Syrian airspace in order to, uh, I think that the main, the main uh, aim of uh, these incursions is to uh, bomb into is to harm the uh, supply route between Iran and Lebanon, the Hezbollah, which goes through Syria. There is a, 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 a considerable Iranian presence in in Syria, which Israel is very keen to uh, harm to to attack. They cannot do it without uh, uh, permission from the Russians. They have, a, in, in fact, an agreement with Russia of notifying, in order to prevent uh, uh, incident, uh, accidental clashes between Israeli uh, uh, aircraft and the, the Russian aircraft on, on the Syrian sky, which would be catastrophic, would would would. would Begin a, 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 an un, you know unwelcome international incident. They they coordinate these incursions uh, into Syrian uh, uh, skies uh, uh, airspace with Russia, and this is this is a, 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 a necessary uh, a, a element in the uh, uh, as it were. Uh, low level intensity war between Israel and Iran. So, so uh, you work it out. I mean, the, the, the relationship between Israel and Russia is a, an aspect, uh, a, a derivative of the uh, low level intensities that are taking place all the time between Israel and Iran. Thank you very much. I, I, I wasn't aware of the Russian involvement, so that is fascinating. Because we've spoken about this and uh, about Iran and the relationships with Israel, um, I wanted to ask your opinion about what was called the axis of resistance. It's still called the axis of resistance. And here I'm I am confused because uh, on the one hand, as you probably have read, um, the Iranian government uh, denied any knowledge of um, events on the 7th of October. And I think that's now been proven to be correct. Iran didn't know about these events. There was reports of some kind of um, disagreement. I don't know how reliable they were when Hania visited Iran and met Ayatollah Khamenei. Ayatollah Khamenei has recently given a kind of um, uh, confusing message, let's say confusing message, in that 
uh, it has been interpreted as a U-turn regarding Iran's position versus the Israel-Palestine conflict. What he has said is that Iran no longer, or Iran does not, he doesn't say no longer, Iran does not call for the end of the Israeli state. It has been interpreted by sections of Middle Eastern media that Iran is approaching towards a two-state solution. And here, of course, Russia and China will be influential because Iran is very much uh, part of those kind of discussions. Um, and I know that uh, both in Sabra and Shatila in Beirut, but also in Gaza, there has been some criticism of Iran and Hezbollah's lack of response, not about 7th of October, but the subsequent, uh, what you rightly call, call ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. Have you any information about this or should we just rely on these speculations, which is inevitable because none of us know the inner thoughts of the Islamic Republic or um, its allies? Well, I, I... I think we should listen carefully to what people say, actually, and, and especially to the tone in which they, they say. Um, a, a lot can be deduced from what is, you know, open open information. I mean, we don't need to, to be uh, uh, parties to any, any secret information. So I think, first of all, it is quite clear that both the Iranian uh, leadership and uh, Hezbollah were not informed of the uh, impending attack onslaught of Hamas. They did not authorize it. And you can listen to the tone in which they, they said this. I think th th it is, it, it is uh, to me clear that, that they were not lying, that, that, that they were taken by surprise. And therefore, they say we didn't authorize it, so don't expect us to uh, cover your your back. Um, so, so I, I, secondly, I don't think that what Khamenei has said is a, a, a big innovation. I I think uh, uh, on internationally, it has been Iran has been misinterpreted as, as saying that Iran is going to. Uh, put an end to the uh, state of Israel. They never said this even under, under uh, 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 Ahmadinejad. Uh, they said something that they look forward to the demise of the uh, Israeli state, to the Zionist state, as uh, in, in the same way that, uh, that uh, the Soviet Union collapsed. So they were, they, they were taking the, the line that history will take care of this. It's not their, them they are doing. Secondly, in the past, I think Iran has uh, made it clear that they are going to support any uh, arrangement, any uh, solution of the Palestinian problem that the Palestinian leadership is going to support. And by the way, uh, this has also been uh, uh, said by Hamas. Hamas has got its own, uh, 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 as it were, messianic, millenaristic uh, 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 view of, of what is going to happen in, in the long run. The, but the long run is very long. In, in, the, in terms of this uh, immediate or medium future, uh, Hamas also said that they are prepared to accept uh, for the time being, that is to say, but the time being can be very long. Uh, any arrangement that, that the, the, the Palestinian people is going to agree to. And of course, we know that the uh, uh, policy of the, the uh, Palestinian leadership in, in the West Bank, that is to say, the, the PLO leadership, is a two-state so-called solution, which I think is, is not going to happen because it is an illusion, because Israel is no way going to allow it. But this is this is the official policy of the so-called international community, 
of the Palestinian Authority of the United States, you name it, except that it's not the policy of Israel and it hasn't been, I've, I've written in the 1970s, in the mid 1970s, an article explaining why the, the, the so-called two-state solution is not going to happen. So, I, And I think my analysis was correct then and it has proven right. As for the, the what this front, or how did you call it? The, the axis of resistance. Axis of resistance. Surprisingly, surprisingly, the only effective element of the uh, so-called axis of resistance are the Houthis. Right. And th this is this is happening. Uh, they are both in the position, and also probably uh, it has it has uh, uh, some. Um, uh, uh, ideological reason in in, in 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 as much as they are more committed and more able to uh, do something that is effective and they've actually done something which is extremely effective uh, 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 and has repercussions worldwide this reminds me of the actions of the, the oil producing Arab states in 1973, uh, when they actually caused a, 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 a global uh, crisis by uh, reducing the supply of oil in uh, response to Israel's war against Egypt in 1973. What the, the Houthis have done uh, it has enormous repercussions on the on the world economy because they are going they they they, they are they are going to or they have actually for the time being stopped the, the traffic of oil through the uh, Suez Canal and have lengthened the supply routes by twenty days. Those you know instead of crossing the the, the Suez Canal the the Tankers have to go around the whole of Africa, which adds 20 days. This is this is of enormous uh, uh, consequence. What uh, the, the so-called international community is going to do about it is another question. Here, I, 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 I cannot guess. But the, the, out of nowhere, I, mean, I think very few people have, have so speculated that the Houthis are going to step in. Uh, in the way they have done. I mean, they, they made certain noises. They, they, they sent a few rockets uh, 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 towards Israel and so on. But uh, their uh, present action uh, is, is way beyond what people, have in, in terms of its effects, uh, of what, what Hezbollah is doing or, or, or Iran, for that matter. Of course, the... the um, low-level uh, war between Iran and Israel is going on all the time. Uh, low level inten uh, the low intensity hostilities between these two countries. Thank you very much. That was uh, actually very well put because that puts the whole of that debate really where it should be. Um, I was going to ask you about uh, what are people generally, at least in the Middle East and at times maybe in Iran are saying, and that is, um, how far would you say Israel is an extension of the US armament industry in that um, it plays the role of selling what you would call illegal state security to many of the allies of the international community, which you rightly put in brackets, which usually refers to um, allies of the United States. Oh, uh, that, it's 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 more than than what you have what you have defined it as. I think it is the, it is a complete synergy between the uh, United States uh, arms, you know, industry. Uh, the uh, military industrial complex and the Israeli uh, armament and, and the uh, high tech industry. The, the two should be taken together. There are several aspects to it. First of all, in uh, replying to the aspect of it that you directly mentioned, that is Israel's supply of uh, uh, 
spy uh, uh, software and various uh, uh, means of, of uh, crowd control and uh, uh, etc. Um, there is a, a good book about it, which I, I would like to recommend. It, it is a book by uh, Jeff Halper, The War Against the People which uh, is quite old. I mean, it's about, I think it's, it's now seven years old, but it's still an interesting read and he goes into detail into the uh, uh, Israeli supply, not only of spyware, uh, but also of various other uh, uh, means, both software and hardware of uh, controlling uh, the masses controlling demonstrations, controlling opposition, and so on. You, uh, I, I, uh, 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 I mean, Israel's role in in supplying uh, spyware um, to various regimes, un mainly unpleasant regimes, uh, is well known. I googled Israel spyware uh, recently, and and you know how many uh, entries I got. Nearly two million. So I, I I don't need to go into detail. You, you you just have to go to the internet and and Google. I think it was it was one million seven hundred thousand uh, odd and uh, 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 items which deal with this. And this this story is very well known. Um, but uh, uh, I don't need to go into detail. You can find a lot of material which is all open. Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, Israel has been caught red-handed in doing it, and in, in some cases, it even got uh, slapped on, on on the wrist by by the United States because it has sold some some of these uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, software bits to regimes that. The United States was not necessarily uh, 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 approving of. That's it is only one aspect, but you see, the the, the 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 it goes very very far beyond this because Israel high tech industry uh, is is intimately locked into the American. Uh, uh, military industrial complex and th this uh, um, uh, uh, translates into uh, various uh, sophisticated high-tech elements that Israel contributes to American uh, weapons. You see uh, Israel specializes not in producing uh, 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 Aircraft. It doesn't produce uh, uh, the F-16 or the F-35, but it produces various elements that are used in these uh, uh, fighting uh, equipment uh, in, 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 in uh, the high-tech uh, navigation uh, uh, weapon weapon uh, 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 direction and so on so this is it now everybody can produce you know unmanned you know what what is known as drones and and but israel was a was a pioneer in uh, producing drones both for spying and for for uh, assassination uh, and, and, and and so it goes. So the, the, there is, you know, a, a very well developed Israeli industry which is locked into and and is very helpful to the American uh, uh, industrial military industrial complex. Let me add one more thing. Israel is by far the biggest recip recipient of American aid, uh, which is currently talking about before the start of this war, that is to say just just uh, last year, let's say, something around three and a half, four billion dollars annually. This is a huge amount. 
this uh, sum is wholly military aid. Israel long ago stopped receiving any other uh, uh, economic uh, aid from the United States. Israel economy is in no need of this, but Israel uh, military is in need of uh, this this uh, additional help. Uh, much of it is in fact a hidden uh, uh, subsidy to the American military industry. How come? Because by uh, agreement, Israel is uh, obliged to spend a lot of this, a big part of this uh, three and a half billion uh, uh, dollars annually in buying American equipment, uh, uh, fighter planes, etc., etc., etc. Now, if Congress had been uh, uh, asked to provide direct subsidy to the American military industry to, to this extent, it, this may involve some questions. But when it is addressed as helping, give, giving aid to our loyal uh, junior partner in the Middle East, it, it, is, it goes, it sails through Congress without any, any problem. But in fact, it is a, a hidden subsidy to the American military industry. Very interesting. Um, I, I, I learned a lot from that as well. Um, you know very well that uh, obviously China in the last few years has pursued this policy of um, belt, belt and Road Project, where it tries to invest, um, a, 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 according to the Chinese government, with um, positive, less, uh, well, uh, well non-exploitation, but in reality it is a level of uh, interest that it gets, the level of exploitation it gets. In the Middle East, there is a lot of talks that India, some of the Arab Emirates and Israel were, uh, or I, I assume they still are, in, in a process of building an alternative trading route in order to compete with China's uh, um, One Belt, uh, One Road project. Is there any truth in that? And of course, uh, all of this, including when it concerned the Arab um, uh, kingdoms, would have been pre-Gaza because uh, relationships with even Saudi Arabia have soured since um, the war in Gaza. But was there any was there any indications that there was such a cooperation? Uh, I cannot answer it fully. I, I suspect there is. The, the relations between the Modi regime and the, 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 and the Israeli Zionist state are very close, uh, both politically and ideologically. Uh, I, I could go on uh, quite a, a lot into the, the similarities between, between the ideology of the, the uh, movement that Modi leads, the Hindustva, uh, and and uh, Zionist ideology, there are, uh, and 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 this translates also into close uh, political relationship. Uh, additionally, of course, the hostility to Islam is common to to both. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if there is. I think Israel, uh, as as in the case of Russia, Israel is playing. Uh, trying to play a somewhat independent role vis-a-vis -vis China. Mm -hmm. uh, it it uh, would like to have closer relationship with China uh, than, than it actually does, but there is a limit to what it can do without angering the United States too much. But it, it, it does, as, as in the case of Russia, it does proceed uh, uh, further than some other uh, American uh, allies. Israel uh, has a, a certain amount of, of freedom of, of action, up to a point, of course. Uh, so um, I, I think uh, the, Israel is trying to play both, both sides. 
uh, both uh, uh, to create an alternative course. They, they, they think strategically and they know that the relationship between the United States and China are not going to improve probably in the next uh, uh, decade, um, especially seeing as to the likelihood of who is going to be the next American president very soon. So I, I, I think they, they, they hedge their bets, I think. That's actually quite, uh, yes, that's very good. Uh, very covers what, what, what was asked by the comrades who were asking me to pose these questions. Um, you mentioned um, gas and oil fields on the Sinai, and I had heard this for many years, we've heard this. In the Middle East, and in particular in Iran, a lot of people are saying uh, that uh, Israel's takeover of Gaza is because they know there's gas and oil fields under Gaza. And I found it difficult to believe that, because even if such a thing exists, I would say the primary question here is ethnic cleansing. But given the strengths of these uh, allegations amongst uh, what I call Middle East pundits, I wanted to know what you thought of these comments. I, I think you, you, if I may correct you, you said the uh, gas deposit in Sinai. I, I, the, the main deposits we are talking about are yes. offshore gas deposits, offshore near near the shore of, of Gaza. I agree that this is not the main aim of uh, the Israeli war at the moment, but it would come as a very welcome bonus for Israel to get uh, control of, of uh, these um, deposits, which are huge. They, they far exceed. You see, Israel is now uh, uh, exploiting uh, some gas uh, deposits uh, in the area of the border between it and Lebanon. If you look, if you take the the, the maritime border, right? You see that you take project from the, the land border between Israel and Lebanon. Uh, and you project into the sea this this area on both sides of the of the line uh, have deposits this um, uh, was a, 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 an important issue which required actually a tacit agreement between uh, israel and hezbollah because hezbollah is is a powerful player in the lebanese uh, uh, politics and uh, they they finally came to an agreement how to divide the uh, these fields. But what uh, has been discovered offshore uh, near Gaza is far in excess of this. It's it's a huge. Uh, uh, if you look it up, I think the <clears throat> the information is freely available. What the size of this and, and recently it has been uh, uh, found that that, that that this is huge. Uh, amount of now uh, does does this play no role in Israel's calculation? I would be surprised if it didn't. See it. Of course, it does. Uh, it will raise various questions because will Israel be in international law allowed to develop this? It cannot do it with, without the complicity of uh, international uh, uh, conglomerates of. Uh, uh, it, it will it will it will need to to uh, make use of some of the the uh, big oil and and, and gas uh, uh, corporation uh, they will not uh, risk involving if it if it is uh, uh, risky in terms of international law so they are they will have a lot of problems to to solve but uh, i think uh, yes, I think their appetite is whetted. I don't think this is this is the main uh, uh, aim of the Israeli war on, on Gaza. Thank you for clarifying this, because 
Um, I, I, I didn't know the extent of this uh, oil fields, gas fields, but um, yeah, I just wanted to know that. So uh, if you have time, I'm sorry, I know we've taken a lot of your time, but two more questions. One is um, yesterday, um, uh, a few days ago, sorry, a few days ago, because I'm not sure when this is going out. Uh, we had protests about hostages, especially after the killing of uh, three Israeli hostages in Gaza. We saw some demonstrations that were um, more significant than what we've seen in terms of demonstrations since the war in Gaza started. What is the state of the Netanyahu government? Um, has he gained a lot of support because of the war or are the protests, especially about the hostages and lack of preparation on the 7th of October, played a negative role as far as his political position is concerned? And I'm well aware that once the war finishes or if the war finishes, he faces um, court cases for corruption. So I wondered if you could talk about the state of the opposition to the Netanyahu. Uh, it, it, this is very complex. Usually when there's a war, it, this tends to unify a nation. Um, it in, the, in this case, if you look at the, at the Jewish majority of the citizens of Israel, um, it has and it hasn't. I mean, the majority of these, uh, the, the Jewish, uh, let us say, some, something like uh, near 80% of the, the uh, citizenship of Israel, um, they approve of the, the justice of the war. They, 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 they think it is a just war, but they don't approve of the leadership that, that uh, uh, conducts this war. The, the, uh, uh, this sector of public opinion is deeply divided uh, they they I, you, you i think more more or less half and half 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 of, of this public would say uh, uh, when this war ends we get get rid of the, the, these rascals who caused this this catastrophe etc etc uh, when the war ends netanyahu is not only going to face investigations about his corruption, but also about his, his the, the failure of the political and the military leadership to uh, uh, prepare, to, to be properly prepared, to use information that they could have had that was available and they ignored it uh, <laughs> to, to uh, forestall this attack of, of Hamas. The, the, the opposition is uh, to the leadership is strengthened by the pressure of the relatives and supporters of the hostages still in the hands of Hamas. They uh, uh, notice that uh, uh, what Israel is doing is putting their relatives, their their uh, uh, dear ones, in in big danger. The uh, killing of the three escaped hostages by Israeli soldiers strengthened this, this uh, uh, trend. Uh, you see, these, these, there are hundreds of these, these relatives who, are, who keep demonstrating and demanding, stop the hostilities there. You are putting our uh, dear ones in danger. What is this, this war you are conducting? It costs the lives of, of uh, our, our relatives. Added to this, they realize now, I, I, and this is a, 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 a side effect of this uh, murder of the three escaped hostages. They, it was murder. It was murder. It was murder in cold blood. I mean, they capitulated. They came half naked. Uh, they they called uh, uh, help in Hebrew. Uh, they were waving a white flag. You only heard about it because they happen to be Israelis, but it, 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 it tells you what the Israeli military uh, is doing to uh, uh, Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. It, 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 
it, it tells you, I mean, it, the Israeli military leaders say they, they, this, these murderers were acting against uh, 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 explicit uh, instructions uh, about how to open fire. This is a lie. And you can see it's a lie. And the reason why you can see it's a lie is that they are not going to put these murderers on trial. There, there, is, there is no plan. Why? Because if they put them on trial, they are going to reveal what that that they acted in 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 in, in according to to normal what to them is normal practice. Whether these are official instructions or not, I don't know. But they obviously acted in in, in accordance with their normal practice when faced with uh, uh, Palestinians. So that would come out in in trial. And therefore, they are not going to be put on trial. If they acted against in, uh, against uh, uh, explicit instructions, why not put them on, the, on court martial? If 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 a soldier opens fire without without authorization against against the uh, 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 explicit authority, then they are put on, on court martial. But they, they, these people are, are are not going to to face any trial. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, one uh, last question. You've been amongst the people who have never, as far as I remember anyway, supported the two-state solution. And I want you to sum summarize why you don't. But also your, um, and I think Matt Spahn's ideas about the resolution of the what is called the Palestine-Israel conflict is more sophisticated than a simple, um, what is proposed by a lot of people, a simple one-state solution. So I wondered if you could expand both your criticism of the two-state solution and your proposals, especially given that right now I see people who many, for many years might have been uh, supporters of the two-state solution and no longer can defend it given the map, given the current <laughs> uh, situation. So I wondered if we could finish on that. Well, uh, this would require, I think, another <laughs> whole, whole okay. discussion. I, I, I think it, it's a vast subject. Uh, I think the the, the what has been uh, claimed as a two-state solution was was never really two-state solution. It was at best, at best, uh, uh, an, uh, one state and a quarter. That is to say, an Israeli state with a, a sort of subservient, disarmed, uh, Bantustan-type uh, mini micro-Palestinian state. That was the, the, the most that Israel has ever considered. Uh, Israel has never agreed to a two-state uh, uh, solution, so-called. It has never a, a, a accepted a, a, any sovereign, real sovereignty of Palestinians on, on a, 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 any part of, of uh, uh, Palestine between the, the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea. You could see that right from the uh, immediate uh, aftermath of the 1967 war, Israel has begun to colonize the West Bank. The colonization of the West Bank started very soon after it was led, of course, by, by religious messianic Zionists, but the uh, Israeli authorities were always in a position to, to stop it, to prevent it. If they had wanted, they didn't. They, uh, in fact, uh, tacitly encouraged this. If you uh, are serious about a two-state solution, you are not going to uh, colonize the part which is, which is supposed to be part of, of, of another state. It is like uh, uh, it has been compared to people negotiating over how to divide the pizza while one of them is eating one slice, one bit of the pizza 
uh, as they are talking, how to divide it. So I'm going to to eat more and more of it, and then we. This is it. It has been a farce. So this was never on. Uh, I think people who are advocating a two-state solution are either misguided, misinformed, or ill-intentioned. Ill uh, they, they, they are uh, uh, trying to deceive us. So I would call it a two-state uh, illusion or a two-state deception. There is a, quite another project that you hear about, a, 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 a one single democratic, uh, if you like, binational state uh, between the Jordan and the, and, and the Mediterranean Sea. I don't think this is a harmful uh, idea. I think it is it is an impossible idea in 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 the way that it, it is proposed, but it is not harmful. At least it has the advantage of uh, uh, throwing a challenge to the. Uh, powers that be, why should you oppose uh, this idea? And in fact, it is a, it's a very nice idea. It's a very wonderful idea. If, if it could be realized, uh, then uh, it, it, it would create a, 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 a situation which is far better than what we have now. Just like the end of apartheid in South Africa, uh, created a better situation, not an ideal one, but a better situation than what existed under apartheid. But the point is that, it, that the Israeli colonization is very different in its political economy than the South African uh, colonization under, under apartheid. And this is because uh, in the case of South Africa, the apartheid could be overthrown by the working class that was the major direct producing uh, uh, class under the, the, even under the apartheid regime, which is the, the indigenous uh, people of South Africa. It was their, their uh, uh, leverage, it was their power that, that uh, enabled the overthrow of apartheid without uh, getting to socialism. Some people hoped that the end of apartheid would be coupled with socialism. I think uh, many Trotskyists be believe in, in this uh, permanent revolution idea. Okay, maybe. But uh, the, the, there was, there was a, a big working class that had the leverage to overthrow apartheid. Now, in the case of Zionist colonization, it is based on a completely different political economy. Uh, Israel does not depend on the labor power of the Palestinian uh, people is still, at least not to a major extent. It do, does, of course, use some of this labor power uh, 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 if you look at the Palestinian citizens of Israel. But uh, the, the overthrow of uh, the, the Israeli uh, Zionist regime, which is a necessary condition for this uh, secular democratic state. You, it, it cannot happen without overthrowing the Zionist regime. This overthrow cannot be done from the outside. And it, it, under present condition, it requires a overthrow from the inside. But who is going to do it? The majority of the Israeli working class has nothing to gain with overthrow of the Zionist regime uh, under a capitalist uh, uh, economic order. What, what would be the gain of the uh, Israeli Jewish working class for this? It would lose its uh, position as a, 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 a privileged uh, uh, class, a, a part of, of a, a dominant nation, exploiting nation, uh, uh, a dominant nation, it it would lose its position as as a, a, a part of a dominant, a dominating uh, hegemonic nation in the Palestine in the Israeli Palestine situation without gaining anything and still remaining a, an exploited class because the, the, uh, the economic social economic order would still be capitalist. So from a privileged 
but exploited class, it would become an unprivileged exploited class. What is the gain of this? So you cannot expect this, the Israeli Jewish working class to, to uh, uh, overthrow the Zionist regime under these circumstances. So who is going to do it? It cannot be done from the uh, purely from the outside. If you think who is going to who is going to overthrow the Israeli the Zionist regime, only with the participation and consent of the Israeli working class can it be done. But this can only be achieved if at all uh, in a situation where this uh, working class would exchange its position of an exploited class as part of a dominant nation to part of a ruling class without national privileges. This is a deal that, that makes sense. Uh, this would require, however, a, a far-reaching uh, revolutionary developments in, in the, the whole of the, the Middle East region. It cannot, it cannot possibly happen under the present, you know, capitalist order in, in in this part of the world. This is a very brief uh, sketch. Of course, we don't have time to go into detail about this. I've written about this quite extensively. Yes, thank you very much. I will uh, send some of those for comrades and maybe on another occasion, as you say. This was my last question because I didn't want to leave it with the ideas that we've touched on the two state, touched on the one state, and we haven't covered what you have extensively written on. We will maybe um, have a whole session on what you are talking about at the end. I'm very grateful for the time you've given. I've learned a lot. I must admit, uh, sometimes you have uh, general vague ideas about various things. I learned a lot from what you said, and I'm sure once we have the translation, the comrades who will listen will also benefit from this. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure talking to you.